Whenever it comes to being myself and being that signature, um, I like to consider myself more of a drag creature. Um, I'm kind of a mascot of a parody of drag and burlesque. Um, I'm a cartoon and I like to make sure that I have um, these kind of signature stupid faces that I make. I really like to think that I can change people's preconceived notions of what's sexy because I think it's sexy and I think it's awesome. So if I believe in it enough, maybe I can convert an audience member or two. Maybe they didn't think they wanted to see it at the beginning, but at the end, there's that awkward boner and they're gonna come back and see me again. I try to put like the years of dance and theater experience and all those things into, into this and I try to make it all, you know, all my strengths kind of come into burlesque. It all counts for something. Having that like je ne sais quoi that y you can't really Define. Being goofy and doing nerdless things. I pull um, a cigarette out of my underwear and I smoke it on stage and just sit down. It's <laughs> as long as it's entertaining, you know. I've never had like <gasps> on stage. I don't. I, I, you get nerves before you go on because you know you don't want to fuck it up. But I've never been afraid to be in front of people. I don't only put on shows. I try to cultivate community. Also, I give the best performance that I'm capable of, whether I am on stage for an audience of 500 people, or if I'm doing a bar show and the roads are frozen over and there's six people. This practice makes perfect. Like hosting a show every week makes me good at my job. Um, but I think that I'm really good at reading people and I'm really good at reading the, audi like, the energy of the audience. And I think that I'm really good at like self-correcting on stage, like modeling that kind of behavior. It's like sometimes you like, miss a pronoun or you like misname someone and instead of like belaboring it you just go oh that's my bad that's not what I meant to say this is what I meant to say sorry about that and move along so I think like being on stage means that I have the opportunity to model like those quick changes and those quick apologies like we're people we fuck up we make mistakes like all we can do is try to be better I bring fetish to the stage very well um, Fetish and curves. Being voluptuous really, um, really helps other curvy girls accept their bodies and see someone like me that's confident in their curves. And I enjoy, uh, I enjoy doing that for people. I think the biggest highlight is some of the lifelong friends I've gotten from being in the community. Um, I have family I never knew I could have who always have my back. I, I actually had a pasty pop one time and I almost got fined $3,000. For one, for one. It was the right one, it's the lucky one. <laughs> and uh, it, it popped off and I did not know when this happened that there were like laws about that. Cause I thought, you know, it's a strip show. It's not that crazy to see a nipple. And uh, I picked it up off the ground and twirled it in my hand like this as a joke and then tossed it behind me and just kept going. And, um, and then I got off stage and then somebody threw a shirt over me and just freaked out and was like, that's really illegal. And, and I went like, what, for one? It's $3,000 for one, so I wanna know if it's like 6,000 if both of them come off. Like, I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> Queer Lusk Festival. Um, it was the first festival I've been involved in. My workshop sold out and, you know, I performed for the first time out there and, you know, I had this beautiful new costume and it, it wasn't necessarily like the performance itself was overly spectacular. I, I just remembered like that whole experience as my first event that I sort of got myself. We did a musical show and we did the whole show and it was stellar and the audience was packed. Um, and the show ended and curtain call went and the performers left the stage and then um, the DJ was playing more musicals number and uh, numbers and people were just coming up on stage and spontaneously dancing and acting out these numbers and um, it just it went on for like an hour and a half like it was like a whole other show and to me what that said was that people felt really safe that they felt really inspired and you know for queer people especially um, 
we get silenced a lot and shut down and so for people to feel like they could jump on stage and be themselves um, I just sat in the audience and watched the second show <laughs> that I didn't have to produce I've got the moment I've got the moment. So Nearly Naked Nutcracker last year, I was the stage manager, stage kitten, stage squirrel, helped co-produce with Vivian Vermouth. Um, we had our out of town guests, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Snapper, they're our headliners almost every year. And uh, he did his Nutcracker routine, like as the Nutcracker. And I came out on stage as a squirrel and he bukkakeed confetti all over me on stage. And it was just this glorious, the squirrel got nutted on moment. And I think that was one of those reminders of this is why I do it because this moment happened. A squirrel got nutted on by a nutcracker and it was confetti in front of 400 people. Yes, this is what I do it for. I, it's all about the nut because I'm a squirrel. Gotta get the nut. There was a point whenever everybody was making fun of me because my heels were hurting like an hour ago and I took off my heels and I just walked around barefoot like around Austin. It's fine, whatever. And we got to a stoplight and everybody's complaining about their heels. It's 2 a.m., last call. And, um, and I said, take your shoes off. Everybody just take your shoes off. We were in a group of people um, in the middle of Austin where like there's you know, townies everywhere who didn't know what was going on. There's all these weird people. And then we um, take our shoes off. And <laughs> well, they take their shoes off and we're all um, these just trash people these, with our, with our um, with our grocery store feet, just walking across um, uh, the the steepest hill in Austin, and uh, and we kept sh drunkenly shouting uh, "garbage fam." <laughs> I got booked um, by a producer in Denton to headline her show, which is a huge honor. Um, especially being so new at performing, I've only been doing it for two years, and um, she got on stage and made this huge fuss um, about how I was going to be like a burlesque legend someday and like just totally talking my game up, talking my game up. First thing I do when I get on stage, I step on it and I literally fall on my butt. <laughs> and uh, the audience was a great sport about it. And, you know, I pointed my toe when I fell, so it was okay. Um, but it was, it was really fun. And um, Surprisingly, I didn't beat myself up for it that much, being the perfectionist that I am. I remember that particular slip and fall very fondly. All of my favorite moments about burlesque and queerlesque are always, like, since I'm so often in, involved in the show, like, I stand at the booth and I get to watch the performances, but I also get to watch the audiences, and that is the most important thing for me, because when those audiences see something they've never seen before and they fucking lose it, it's the best thing. Like, it makes my job totally worthwhile.